We are talking about Aspen routers, all right? Aspen routers come in very convenient sizes, 16 by 16, 32 by 32, which you see here, and 72 by 72, which you see here. How can you have 72 inputs and 72 outputs and still only be two and a half inches deep? It boggles the mind, all right? Look at that. Count them up. That's 144 BNC connection points. All my engineers at home are, are going gaga over this. You've got video reference. You've got a built-in fan to, to pull away your heat. Very nice. But what is, a, what is a router? Why do we need all these inputs and outputs? Well, to answer that question, I would like to go to our first slide of the evening. And so if my uh, brand new technical director, Jeronimo Tarife, can help me out, there we are. Slide number one. If you are working in an ENG production vehicle, if you're doing broadcast monitoring, if you're running a duplication house, doing post-production or live staging or anywhere long runs are needed, you, my friend, need a router. Let me put it into a, a perspective for you. Say you're at a concert and you're doing a 10 camera shoot for, I don't know, Paul McCartney. And you've got all your 10 cameras coming into your switcher. However, your engineer also needs the same 10 cameras to have his own switch to, to match all the cameras up to make sure his vector scope looks good on camera one and camera four. Well, if you came into a bunch of distribution amplifiers, things get messy very quickly. That's why you want a router. You bring your 10 cameras into the router, uh, for instance, if we're into this 32 by 32, inputs 1 through 10 here could be your cameras. And outputs 1 through 32 could be all of your individual sources. For instance, 10 of those outputs are going right to your switcher. Another 10 of your outputs, representing all 10 cameras, are going right to your engineer. So he has the same 10 cameras to select from while he's painting cameras. Another output might want to go to individual ISO record of your cameras. You've got a rack full of key pros or a rack full of sound devices, PIX 240s, and you want to get your ISO record of every single camera. If you don't have a router, you're going to need a distribution amplifier to get multiple outputs of every single camera. If you do have a router, it becomes much easier to send your signals around. So a concert example is, is very good. What if you're a news director and you've got, you know, Correspondent A is in Benghazi, and correspondent B is in London, and correspondent C is in Singapore, and they're all coming in you know, on HDSDI. And then you've got your Atlanta feed and your New York feed. You've got all of the, all of the disparate inputs and outputs that you've got to deal with. You don't want to have some guy with a, a patch panel sort of manually pulling things out and plugging them back in. Uh, uh, a router serves a couple of purposes. Number one, it's an electronic patch panel. So if all of a sudden I need output number six to show input number four, simply done, simply done. I don't have to unplug anything. I don't have to plug anything else back in. Uh, conversely, if I wanted input 17 to go to all of my outputs, simply done, simply done. It works like a distribution amplifier to multiply your outputs, and it works like a patch panel to change the input to output association. All right, fine. Broadcast routers, what's so special about Aspen's you know, special two and a half inch line. Now, just because we've got it racked up in this nice sexy rack case doesn't mean the 32 by 32 isn't also two and a half inches. You'll have to trust me, it is two and a half inches deep. But there's more to it than just the size that makes this router stand apart from other broadcast routers. So if Geronimo, if you could bring me up slide number two, please. There we are. Okay, small footprint. We've already discussed that, two and a half inches deep. Convenient sizes, 16 by 16, 32 by 32, and additionally 72 by 72. Furthermore, you can put any kind of digital signal you want in here. This can be standard definition SDI, HD SDI, which is 1.5 gigabits a second, all the way up to 3G HD SDI, 3 gigs per second. Pretty fantastic. Now, this is the one that really knocks people over, all right? Input equalizers supporting long cable runs 200 meters at the HD SDI 1.5 gigabit per second uh, bit rate. Let's go back to camera for a second here. Let's go back to camera. Typically, you're used to people telling you, oh, HDSDI, that can only run 300 feet. 200 meters is 600 and something feet. I'm not really clear on the metric system, but I know it's more than 600 feet. What that means is, with your camera 500 feet away, you do not need special triax, you do not need special fiber optic gear to sort of, you know, convert your signal from digital to optical. You can run a cable 600 feet from your source to this router and never drop a frame. 
nobody else in the market can claim that. Uh, that's, the, that's the value of their um, special high-powered reclocking inputs. Additionally, even though it's got all these special high-powered reclocking inputs, this Aspen line of routers is still among the lowest power consumption in its competitors. So if you're, if you're you know, real green and you're into saving the economy and reducing our dependence on foreign oil, throw out your old broadcast router, pick yourself up an Aspen router for the lowest power consumption from among its competitors. Uh, let's see that slide number two again, please. All right, one, two, or four rack units, all right? So the 16 by 16 panel, that's one rack units uh, large. The 32 by 32 rack panel, that is two rack units large. And then when you get all the way up to 72 by 72, that's when you're taking up four rack spaces. So at an inch and a half, four rack spaces is like six inches. We are fitting all 72 inputs and all 72 outputs on six inches by two and a half inches deep. Really, really impressive. And if you're really into numbers, 19 and a half inches wide, that's a standard rack space. All right, very small footprint, very powerful routing stuff. We're going to pause briefly just for a moment here. We're going to go to Miss Debbie with a question coming in from the internet. Yes, um, two-day, two-night show said that 200 meters is 656 feet, so, two feet. Chris from Graham River Productions, longtime <coughs> customer, Midtown Video, longtime friend of the show. Thank you for tuning in. We do have a, a nice shout out uh, uh, warmed up for you at the end of the show. How, how long is 200 meters? 656.2 feet. 656.2. Thank you very much for, uh, <coughs> for viewing the show, Chris, and thanks for your input today. 200 meters, 656.2 feet. That is exactly how far you can run uh, 1.5 gigabit per second <laughs> HDSDI cable from your source to one of these routers without suffering any loss. Uh, we do have a graphical representation of this. Geronimo, if you'll bring up slide number three, please. All right. Standard. Blackmagic Design, Everts, and Ross routers give you at most 100 meters, right? That's the 300-foot limit that you're used to with HDSDI cables. Aspen doubles it. It's 100% longer, 200 meters, or as Chris pointed out, 656.2 feet. Fantastic. All right. Uh, let's, let's bring up slide number three here, to, or excuse me, slide number four to see what else we can say about these Aspen routers. A lot of people are telling me, Jesse, Blackmagic... They're really making some inexpensive gear. And I tell them, yes, you're right. And you get what you pay for. Why do I bring that up? Look at this direct comparison between the Aspen 32 by 32 and the Blackmagic 40 by 40 compact video hub. All right? Number one, the Blackmagic is only working when you're connected with a PC over a USB cable. On the other hand, all the setup Mm, options, interface, user interface in the Aspen 32 by 32 is served up by a built-in web browser. So you can take any computer, whether it's a Mac, a PC, I'll bet even a Linux computer could connect to this device so long as your Ethernet cable is connected to the same network. You could even be wireless. If you're plugged into the same network as the Aspen 32 by 32, you get to, you get to mess with it. So Geronimo, why don't you bring up my computer to, to sort of to, to show what I mean by this. So here we are. Uh, here we are. I'm on, this is a Mac computer. And you'll see I'm just simply on my web browser. Uh, you can see that we're just in Firefox here, right? And if we zoom in, you'll see that these 32 buttons look a whole lot like the 32 buttons on the front panel of my Aspen. So if I wanted to route bars to output 29 and 30, it's as simple as clicking, up, clicking away. So bars, 29, done. Very, very easily done. Additionally, you can get into the advanced routing in here. From this user interface, you can see what, uh, what you're looking at. You can look at its IP address, which, which you'll need actually to get into this device. But uh, it's these output reclockers which allow us to get that super 200 meter, mm, 200 meter distance on your HDSDI panels. What happens if you're not using a standard HDSDI bit rate, what if you were doing a 19 megabit per second bit rate ATSC standard for you know, just sort of sending your MPEG video over satellite coming in off an SDI feed? If you are not using a standard data rate, such as 1.5 megabits or, or 1.5 gigs or 3 gigs a second, you can turn off these reclockers. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back into my computer for a moment. Uh, if you see right here, B1 has been detected as standard FSDI. B2 has been detected as HDSDI. We've got auto detection on what kind of signal is coming in. If you look over here, 
the reclocker mode is set to auto, which means when it detects standard definition, it's going to reclock at the standard definition rates. When it detects high definition, it's going to reclock at the high definition rates. However, again, if you're sending some non-standard system, such as the 19 megabit per second ATSC data bit rate, you can simply turn off your reclocker. Let's go back to the computer just for one quick sec. I'll show how it's done. From auto, go into bypass, and now we've forced it into uh, turning off the reclocker. This will allow you to route your non-standard bit rates to any of your outputs. So this is a major advantage over other competitors who are stuck either in HD or in SD or in one or the other, right? Or in only a combination of both, but does not allow for non-standard data rates. So if you're a news guy and you've got to be accepting a satellite signal from somewhere else, ATSC, over an SDI cable, you're going to need the functionality offered in these Aspen routers that is not offered by other folks. Let's go back now to slide number four for the, for the direct comparison on the Blackmagic versus Aspen routers. Phenomenal. All right. Standard features, layers, levels, salvos. A salvo is setting up a preset so I can have a preset routing of one through eight inputs to one through eight outputs or input one to all outputs, like input one to all outputs one through 32. Those are salvos. They're basically your presets that you can call up and call back. These are not available on the Blackmagic routers. Regarding integration, the Blackmagic routers stand alone only. While on the other hand, you can control the Aspen routers either from their front panel or from a remote panel. A remote panel such as this one. This is a 16 by 16 remote panel that's going to control my 32 by 32 router. So can you get a, can you get a shot of both of us in here? Yeah. And let me get, let me get these panels down here. Yes, all right. Uh, depending on how brightly these LEDs are going to light up, you see that these, green, these LEDs on the bottom are, are lit up green, right? So if I wanted to route something, like for instance, for output number five, I want to change to out input number eight. I'm hitting it here on the top button, and you'll just have to take my word for it. It's, it's not showing up uh, brightly enough down here. But uh, the Sierra 32x32 32 32 router, even though it's 32x32, 32 32, will respond to a 16x16 control panel. All of these devices are working in concert. Come on in, we'll give you sort of a, a hands-on demonstration. The, the studio lights are really blaring away the, the LED blinking behind these buttons. Suffice it to say, the interconnectivity of the 16x16 16 16 controller to the 72 or the 32 router is pure. There is no problem with it. Additionally, if you wanted a separate 32 by 30 controller for your 32 by 32 router, also available. One of the really beautiful features of this are, you, you'll recall that in a concert setting, you need to get your 10 cameras into your 10 camera switcher, but your engineer also needs a single output, just, just his own control for all 10 cameras so that he can check camera versus camera to make sure they're all painted and color matched the same way. Well, you can get yourself your 16 by 16 router, and set up your initial route for the beginning of the day, and then say, all right, engineer, output number nine. Output number nine is the engineer's output. So now the engineer gets his own remote panel. He says, output number nine, and now he gets to switch what output number nine is through cameras one through 10. That way, he's sitting somewhere outside the truck remote. All right, this is ethernet. You don't have to worry about your distance, 330 feet, as far as your network will carry you, that's how far away your engineer can sit and paint these cameras and have his own switch. He's always on output number nine, and he can switch between inputs one through 10. Remote panels, big switchers, big routers. Pretty awesome. All right, so uh, just to wrap this up, a couple of the most important features that set this unit apart from other competitors, uh, apart from their incredibly small footprint, their incredibly low power consumption, and their broadcast level of auto detection and interconnectivity with these other routers, I'd like to present the warranty question. Aspen sounds, stands behind their product with a seven-year warranty. Seven years. Uh, the Blackmagic guys are putting a three-year warranty on their video hubs. All right. Again, the video hub is more of an electronic patch panel. It can make a one-to-one -one relationship, but it can't do the sort of routing specific things that we're doing here where you can take input one and route it to all 32 outputs. It's a digital patch bay, but it's also several multiple distribution amplifiers.